you very much. I uh, welcome members to the 13th meeting in 2015 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee and as always ask members to turn off mobile phones please. Agenda item one is instruments subject to affirmative procedure. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the climate change additional greenhouse gas Scotland order 2015 draft. Is the committee content with that instrument please? Okay. Agenda item two instruments subject to negative procedure. The Fireman's Pension Scheme Amendment Scotland Order 2015 SSI 2015-140 and the Firefighters' Compensation Scheme and Pension Scheme Amendment Scotland Order 2015 SSI 2015-143. Both instruments were laid on the 26th of March 2015 and came into force on the 1st of April 2015. The very short period of time between laying the instruments and them coming into force has meant that there has been no opportunity for scrutiny of the instruments. Does the committee therefore agree to draw both instruments to the attention of the Parliament under reporting ground J as they fail to comply with the requirements of section 28.2 of the Interpretation and Legislative Reform Scotland Act 2010? Thank you. The committee may consider that the breach of the 28th the rule in this case raises a broader issue about the timetabling of instruments which are prepared and laid in parallel with UK instruments which make similar provision. The committee may consider that it, there is a clear need for projects of this nature to be planned in a way which allows for the procedural requirements of both parliaments to be met. The committee may further consider it to be unsatisfactory that it's not been achieved in the present case. The committee may wish to welcome, however, that the Minister for Parliamentary Business has undertaken in recent correspondence with the committee to review the processes for laying instruments in these circumstances and to take steps to improve awareness within the UK Government of the challenges involved. The Committee may consider that this work should be prepared, progressed in early course in order to avoid similar issues arising in the future. Two further points have been raised by our legal advisers on the latter of the two instruments, SSI 2015 143. Article 11.2b.3 inserts a reference to Regulation 166 of the Firefighters' Pension Scheme Scotland Regulations 2015 into Rule 3.2c of Part 10 of the Schedule to the Firefighters' Compensation Scheme Scotland Order 2006. The correct reference should be to Regulation 156 of the 2015 Regulations. Does the Committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament under the General Reporting Ground? Yes. Article 18, in inserting a new subparagraph 11 into Rule 1 of Part 2 of the Schedule to the Firefighters' Pension Scheme, Scotland Order 2007, is defectively drafted. The new subparagraph provides that a person is a provisionally enrolled member of the scheme if the person is not eligible to become a provisionally enrolled member pursuant to Rule 6C3 of Part 11. The reference to not eligible should be a reference to not ineligible. The effect of this error is that the provision does not achieve its policy objective. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament under reporting ground I, as the drafting appears to be defective? Stuart. Uh, I think the, the errors in this uh, particular instrument uh, are quite significant, uh, potentially affecting uh, individuals. Um, Certainly, we'd expect to see that remedied. But more to the point, I, I think it illustrates the real danger of uh, uh, officials in the Scottish Government and the Parliament not having adequate opportunity to, uh, to look at these instruments uh, in the, in the run-up to their being laid and implemented. And I'm given to understand uh, that the error in relation to eligible and not ineligible uh, is lifted straight from the UK legislation, which appears to be defective in a similar uh, way. Um, I wouldn't think it unreasonable that uh, officials uh, in Scotland uh, rely on the professional standards that apply elsewhere, but I think the compression of timetable here appears to have uh, led to what can only be described as a burach, and so, therefore, the issue of uh, properly meeting our timetable is not simply a technical issue. It's an issue that has uh, real-life implications that we uh, are very much indebted to the legal advice we as a committee have for uh, bringing this to uh, our attention. And I hope 
equally uh, that the UK uh, is aware that this defect has been found and looks again at its own legislation. That's of no consequence to us directly, uh, but it would be good practice if they do that. And it's a reason why they should work with us more uh, robustly to give adequate time for everybody who can check this to do so. Everybody will benefit if that actually happens, as this case perfectly illustrates. Jim. Stuart Stevenson, in everything he has said, and caution against um, accepting the work of others when they have made mistakes, notwithstanding their best endeavours. And we should have the time, therefore, to check for ourselves um, instruments that have been examined elsewhere, but not properly examined as it turns out in this circumstance. For those comments, colleagues, the committee may wish to note, however, the Scottish Government has undertaken to bring forward a further instrument to correct both of these errors with retrospective effect. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Housing Scotland Act 2006 Repayment Charge and Discharge Amendment Order 2015, SSI 2015 144 nor on the National Health Service Free Prescriptions and Charges for Drugs and Appliances, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015 160, nor on the Welfare of Animals at the Time of Killing, Scotland Amendment Regulations 2015, SSI 2015 161. Is the committee content with these instruments, please? Yes, Thank you. Good. Agenda item three is instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. The Act of a Journal, Criminal Procedure Rules Amendment No. 2, European Protection Orders 2015, SSI 2015-121. Paragraph B of Form 616B in the Schedule to the Instrument appears to be defectively drafted. Paragraph B specifies the incorrect maximum penalties on summary conviction which are applicable for an offence under Section 234A-4 of the Criminal Procedure Scotland Act 1995 as modified by section 254D2. Paragraph B should have specified the maximum penalties as 12 months imprisonment or a fine not exceeding the statutory maximum or both instead of three months imprisonment or a fine not exceeding level five of the standard scale or both. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the parliament under reporting ground I as it appears to be defectively drafted? A further point has been raised on this instrument by our legal advisers. There is a minor drafting error in the new Rule 6191 of the Criminal Procedure Rules 1996, as inserted by paragraph 22 of this instrument. Rule 6191 provides that the rule applies where the court has to send information to the competent authority of an issuing state under these provisions, so under, among the other provisions, Rule 6134. But this should refer to 61. Rule 61.3.3. Does the committee therefore agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament under the general reporting ground as it contains a minor drafting error? Okay. The committee may wish to note that the Lord President's private office has confirmed that the errors will be corrected by laying an amending instrument before Parliament at the earliest possible opportunity. Given that the instrument came into force on the 1st of April, the committee may consider the amendment should be laid quickly. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Act of Sederant, Rules of the Court of Session and Sheriff Court, Bankruptcy Rules Amendment, Bankruptcy and Debt Advice Scotland Act 2014-2015, SSI 2015-119. Is the committee content with this instrument, please? The committee may wish to note that in response to questions raised by our legal advisers on this instrument, the Lord President's private office has explained that it intends to review its approach to citing and referring to rules of court in acts of sederant and acts of a journal with a view to adopting a standardised approach. The Lord President's private office hopes to be able to communicate its revised approach to citation and references to the committee in the near future. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Housing Scotland Act 2014, Commencement No. 2, Order 2015, SSI 2015-122. The committee may wish to note, however, that the Scottish Government intended within the order to commence Section 89 of the Housing Scotland Act 2014. The order commenced Sections 85, insofar as not already in force, 87, 88, 90, 91 and 92 of that Act on the 1st of April 2015. 
which make a number of amendments to existing legislation, effectively largely administrative changes in the area of housing, private housing conditions. The omitted section 89 relates to maintenance plans under the Housing Scotland Act 2006 and operates to change the way in which such maintenance plans must be registered. The fact that section 89 is not commenced by the order does not affect the, the operation of the provisions which are commenced by the order. The Scottish Government has confirmed that section 89 will be included in the next commendment order to, make under the, to be made under the Housing Scotland Act 2014 and until then, the current arrangements for the registration of maintenance plans will remain in place. In noting this, does the committee agree to report that it is otherwise content with this instrument? Thank you. Uh, agenda item four, the Scottish Elections Reduction Voting Age Bill. Purpose of this item is for the committee to consider the delegated powers in the bill at stage one. Members will have seen the Delegated Powers Memorandum and the briefing paper. Section 9E of the Representation of the People Act 1983 requires registration officers to invite persons to apply for registration in the electoral register if they are not currently registered, but the officer believes that they are entitled to be registered. Section 41 of the Bill confers powers on Scottish ministers to make provision about invitations to be given to persons under the age of 16 in relation to the registration of local government electors. Does the committee agree to report that it finds this power to be acceptable in principle and that it is content that it is subject to the affirmative procedure? Yes. Sections 12, 13 and 14 of the Bill set out the limited circumstances in which details of entries in the local circumstances Local government electoral register relating to under 16 year olds may be published, disclosed, or shared. Section 14.2 provides a non exclusive list of examples of what might be done with the power. The list includes authorising or requiring the supply of information to, unspecified, sorry, to specified persons, specifying the purposes for which such information may be used, prohibit, prohibiting further supply of information, and prohibitions on the supply of copies of the full register. Does the committee agree to report that it finds this power to be acceptable in principle and that it is content that is subject to the affirmative procedure? Yes. Section 17 permits regulations to make the full range of ancillary provision, incidental, supplemental, consequential, transitional, transitory or saving provision. Ministers may make such provision if they consider it necessary or expedient for the purposes of or in consequence of or for giving full effect to any provision in the bill. Does the committee agree to report that it finds this power to be acceptable in principle and that it is content that it is subject to the affirmative procedure when it amends primary legislation, but otherwise to the negative procedure? Yes. Okay. Given that no issues have been raised in relation to these powers, and we do not wish to raise any questions with the Scottish Government, are we agreed to report that the committee is content with the delegated powers provisions in the bill at stage one? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item five is the Human Trafficking and Exploitation Scotland Bill. This item of business is consideration of the response from the Scottish Government to the Committee's Stage 1 report on the Bill. Members have seen the briefing paper and the response from the Government. Do members have any comments or are we content to note the response and, if necessary, reconsider the Bill after Stage 2? Yeah. We are. Thank you very much. Uh, that completes our agenda and uh, our next meeting will be next Tuesday. Thank you.